I knew in 2001 that I wanted to work along the border and start working towards identifications because we have way too many people that are dying and not enough people that are being identified. In 2002 I started at the university and started putting together the, the support system for doing this and in 2003 we launched our database for unidentified undocumented border crossers and working with families. We had our first ID in 2003. I also visited Del Rio, Texas in 2003 and decided that this should be our starting point for exhumations and that's mostly because it's a nice city and it's also uh, a safe city. So we're working now um, on four different burials. Uh, we'll finish those and we may have time to do several more before the end of the field season. It's very hot, the ground is very hard, and the students are working like they've never worked before and impressing some of the staff around here because they didn't think that they could actually ever get down to a body. And they did in the first day, so they're, they're working hard and doing really well. It's, it's very enriching being able to do something that f from a training uh, aspect teaches the anthropologists and forensic scientists of the future and at the same time being able to do something worthwhile to repatriate people to their home countries and families I mean it's it's a very endearing feeling. Anybody who has family should at least know that they have someone out there and just letting them know that their loved ones have died would give them just give them a sense of easiness for them back home so they wouldn't even have to worry about their family member anymore and they can actually get peace of mind from this. One of the things I think that stuck out is our findings in our particular grave. Uh, we were able to find what seems to be the remains of a baby and it's actually Dr. Baker's first time finding the remains of a baby and it just really stuck out because hopefully someone will be able to remember a missing baby at some point, perhaps a mother that we might find later. Um, it's just really stuck out there for me. <laughs> this is someone's child. This is someone's baby that they were hoping to grow up and have a great life for. They tried to have a great life for him by bringing him over here and they didn't make it. Something unfortunate happened and to be able to figure out what happened, who they are, and to give them back to someone's family who's missing them, it's such a great reward to me. I couldn't do anything other than this. I've already know that for just being out here for four or five days. Every single one of them are completely dedicated to what they're doing. This is a field school and they, they have to do it for credit, but we have other field schools. There are great field schools where they could be traveling around in beautiful places and, and learning different things, but they've chosen to come here and they've done it on their own dime. So we don't have any funding. The students pay for their tuition and then they pay for all their costs and expenses while we're out doing this. And so it's. Um, it's a big undertaking for them. It's financially hard for some of them to be here and they've just done everything they can to make it to this point. So we're hoping that we'll see some, some support from our alumni for efforts in this way. And I know one day we'll see support from these guys to continue this on because if you talk to them, they'll tell you this is an invaluable experience that, that they feel very honored to have the opportunity to do this. And, uh, if they get an identification, I think they'll be motivated for life to continue on in this work.